Joining me now is Ambassador John Bolton, former National Security Advisor to Donald Trump in his first term. He's also served as U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations. Ambassador Bolton, thank you so much for being here on a big day. It is a big day. It's a big day. Not a good day, but a big day. It's a big day. Let me get your reaction to this latest breaking news, the fact that President-elect Trump intends to nominate Matt Gates to run the Department of Justice. What was your immediate reaction when you heard that? Well, it, it must be the worst nomination for a cabinet position in American history. Uh, I think this is something that uh, falls well outside the scope of deference that should be given to a president in nominating members of his senior team. Gates is not only totally incompetent for this job, he doesn't have the character. He is, he is a person of moral turpitude. And notwithstanding how difficult it may be politically, this is a nomination the Republican Party should oppose. You're saying he's the worst. That's a pretty strong language, the worst ever. Do you think the Republican Party will oppose him, though, even those who are saying that they're shocked today? Well, I think a lot of people are going to be intimidated by Trump. This is the way he governs. And uh, I think it may never come to a vote on the floor. Uh, uh, if uh, the new leadership in the Senate goes to the president and says, you cannot endanger Republican senators by forcing them to vote in favor of this nomination. Uh, and if you don't want to uh, have a real internal party battle, this nomination needs to be withdrawn. Do you think that Gates is the, and we'll, we'll tick through some of the other nominees, but do you think he's the only one that you might see some real opposition to, or do you think there are others? Well, I, I think that Tulsi Gabbard's uh, nomination to be director of national intelligence, when I first heard that today, my re immediate reaction was hilarious. Why? She's totally not competent for that job. G Gates, mm -hmm. Gates is the worst. She may be tracking in at the second worst. Haven't had a lot of time to do research on the Tulsi Gabbard nomination, but let me bring you to January the 8th, 2020, congressional briefing after President Trump's correct decision to eliminate Qasem Soleimani, the head of the Iranian Quds Force. Uh, she said, Tulsi Gabbard said in an interview with uh, uh, Jake Tapper, uh, that the briefers who described the reasons for the elimination of Qasem Soleimani and, and how, how it carried out, she said they provided vague comments, no justification whatsoever for this illegal and unconstitutional act of war that President Trump took. Mm. So, so now is she prepared to obey the orders of a man who uh, committed an illegal and unconstitutional act of war as director of national intelligence? Is, is that the kind of person Donald Trump wants to head that important function. I, I've believed for a long time that ODNI should be abolished, mm -hmm. and now there's another reason to abolish it. Well, and undoubtedly that will come up during her confirmation hearings, and there's no doubt about that, that quote that you just read, which is incredibly striking to hear it. Let me ask you uh, about Pete Hegseth. He obviously also came as a surprise to some people because he, yes, has a military background, but is a Fox News host. Did you see that one coming? And is that uh, someone who you would support? Well, I, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't put Hegseth in the same category as Matt Gates and Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, and uh, I think the purpose of the confirmation process is to find out whether he's qualified. I, I used to do a lot of stuff on Fox News too. I don't <laughs> think that disqualifies me. Uh, Hegseth went to Princeton University. Uh, it's not Yale where I went, but it's not a bad little <laughs> college. He served with honor and bravery yeah. in the military. And people say he was only a captain. Chuck Hagel was an enlisted mm. man. So, so was I in the National Guard. So it, being a captain is government experience. Can he handle the job? It depends in part on who he has around him. Mm. Uh, and, you know, he said a number of things that have come out in the past uh, a day or so uh, saying he'd fire the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I think that's a clear mistake. Why? There, there may because I think that's the that that is the kind of politicization of the military that we've striven throughout our history, and and I think been very successful in keeping the military non-political. There are complaints about what Biden's policy did to the Department of Defense, and if it's to clean up the politicization. Uh, that uh, Trump wants to act, I think that's fine. I don't think you want to compound the error by going through a, a purge of generals that you think are unsatisfactory. Do you anticipate that there will be a purge, as your language, of sorts, both in the DOJ and 
uh, at the Pentagon? Look, the president has and should have uh, freedom to, to get the kind of uh, uh, people in place that he wants in government. Uh, Article 2 is very clear about where the executive power lies. It lies with the president. The question is whether it's prudent and sensible mm -hmm. to do some of the things they've been talking about. If you get Matt Gates as the attorney general, I'd like to see what lawyers are prepared to work for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'd like to see what their reaction is when he starts ordering prosecutions as Trump wanted John Kerry prosecuted in his first term for violation of the Logan Act. How much of that are we going to see? Is Matt Gates going to prosecute Liz Cheney and Mark Milley? Are there attorneys in the department who, on the basis of no evidence whatever they've committed any criminal conduct, are they really going to convene a grand jury? This is the kind of crisis that you're going to see. I think in these two departments, defense and justice in particular, where the flashpoints will be in the second Trump term. Do you have any concerns? You've obviously been critical of President-elect Trump after he left office. You know, look, uh, he's got a long list of people to seek retribution against. I don't know where I am on the hit parade these days, but, but this is something we should stand against. You don't prosecute your political opponents for disagreeing with you. Let me ask you about Marco Rubio in the context of an issue you and I talk about quite a lot, which is Ukraine. Uh, how do you see if he is, in fact, confirmed to be the next secretary of state? He has been supportive of funding, but it said it's also time to wind this war down. How do you think he would impact those foreign conflicts? Well, what I hope he will do, and I hope uh, Mike Waltz will do the same, who's also modified his position on Ukraine, they are now no longer in the position of giving political speeches. Yeah. They, they now have to do strategic analysis of what's in the best interest of the United States. Uh, and given the circumstances and given the negative effect of uh, a Russian victory or what's seen as a Russian victory in Ukraine, that point has to be made. Here's one important point they mm -hmm. should make. It's not just a Russian victory. It's the impact it has on China the principal threat the United States uh, faces. If we don't stand up to aggression on the continent of Europe, are we going to stand up to it in Asia? Well, I, so you take me to my next question, because obviously Marco Rubio is a hawk when it comes to China. Do you think that that is a strong nomination? Look, I think it's uh, the best you can expect from, from the Trump administration. And uh, I think I have a lot of respect for Marco Rubio. I wish he was stronger on Ukraine, uh, no, nobody agrees with anybody 100 percent. I'd say pretty nearly the same thing about Mike Waltz. I don't want to do him any damage with Trump. I probably should say I'll be for him or against him, whichever will help them more. But I, I think these are two strong nominations. Do you think that President-elect Trump, who's going to take the oath of office in just a matter of months, do you think he will adhere to the oath? I don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't think he understands oaths. I don't think he understands what the responsibilities of the presidency are. It's why I thought he was not fit to be reelected. All right. Ambassador John Bolton, as always, we really appreciate your perspective. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.